Well, welcome back. Steve Campbell here with Travis Moss. We want to continue our year-end tax planning, some considerations and things to do before 1231. Um, today, we want to talk about Roth conversions. Uh, maybe, again, this is a topic that you've heard. Sometimes you can read an article. Should you be considering a Roth conversion? But we want to break it down for you. So, Travis, when people hear Roth conversion, what does that actually mean? Well, basically, you have two types of retirement accounts, traditional and then Roth. And what it means is, is most people, when we put money in a retirement account, we get a tax deduction. Um, so the money goes into the retirement account and then it grows over the years. And then when we take it out, we have to pay income taxes on it. Mm -hmm. So a Roth retirement account or a, a Roth IRA, essentially you don't get a tax deduction to put in, but when you take money out, all those gains and all the growth that you've had over the years, it's all tax free. Right. So um, what we're doing with a Roth conversion is we're taking money from an account uh, that you've already put away for retirement and got the tax deduction for, and we're taking it over into an account where you're never going to have to pay income taxes again on it. Well, and it's not just as simple as you take the entire balance, which could be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in a traditional IRA that you've never paid tax on and just throw it into a Roth and hope for the best. So I got to imagine there's some considerations or pitfalls, some areas people should be considering. So if someone is thinking about this, what are some points to consideration to take in? Well, number one, timing. I mean, it's all really about timing and understanding how the rules work. Um, if you're in a situation where you have retired and you're going to have really low income tax years, instead of paying 0% income taxes this year, or we're missing out on possibly even some, um, you know, really low tax brackets. If you're going to have, if you're going to look forward and say, okay, I'm going to owe a lot of taxes in the future when I have to take money out of my retirement accounts, you might want to take some out now at a lower tax bracket. So that brings us to understanding how tax brackets actually work. And a Roth conversion generally is not going to help you if you're in a high tax bracket now and will be in a low tax bracket in the future. It's normally going to help you if you're in a low tax bracket now and will be in a high future tax bracket. Um, so tax brackets are confusing. How taxes work is confusing. The big point is you don't just rush out and do this because you could actually end up creating more taxes um, than you would be saving long term. Uh, by by triggering a Roth conversion, by doing a Roth conversion. So people will call up a lot of times, I've retired, I'm worried about tax rates, so I wanna do a Roth conversion. First place we go is look at their tax situation. What's your current tax situation? A couple of other things that kind of, you know, in the, in the, in the bubble of Roth conversions that you wanna take into account is uh, you're doing a Roth conversion, taking money out of a tax deferred account putting it into a tax-free account triggers income taxes at the time you do it. So if you take $50,000 from a uh, traditional retirement account and put it into a Roth retirement account, it creates taxes on the $50,000 right then at whatever your current tax rate is. Right. But then when you take it out of the Roth someday down the road, no taxes ever again. But at that moment when you do it, so if you did that before the end of the year this year, and you have to do it in the calendar year, so that's why we're doing this now. You have until from now until the end of the year. Um, you've got to be really careful of a couple of things. Number one, if you're taking Social Security, maybe you're in a situation where you're not paying income taxes on it. This could create income taxes on your Social Security. It could, if you have capital gains and you're under, just watch our last video, you're under the threshold. It could trigger uh, more taxes on your capital gains or your qualified dividends or if you're in a higher income tax threshold, um, it could push your Medicare uh, premiums up. If you have a higher level of income, Medicare premiums are based on your income level. So it could push those up as far as, you know, kind of creates a new tax for you. So you really want to take into account the entire tax situation. So, it, you, you know, you don't do this in a bubble. If you've got a, a financial advisor that says, I don't do taxes, I can't tell you the right amount, get a new one. If you've got a tax advisor that's saying, I don't do investments, I can't tell you how to do the conversion. You know, get a financial advisor who can do that, who understands the taxes or will talk to your tax person, right? Like, this is important that you have some coordination here and that you understand the rules, but you don't want to miss the opportunity. For instance, I had a client I was working on the other day. There's about $15,000 that they could convert in their Roth, or from their IRA to their Roth, and pay $0 in income taxes. zero dollars in income tax they're going to they're going to take fifteen thousand dollars they would have paid income taxes on at any point in the future 
because of their situation, get it over to the Roth and there's zero taxes due. They would have missed that. They just said, hey, great, I don't have to pay taxes this year. They would completely miss the opportunity. So right. we always do the planning at the end of the year. Why do we do it at the end of the year? Because you know what happened all year long, right? If you do it in January and something changes with your tax situation, you can't, you know, it's really hard to fix it. Right. So we wait till the end of the year, take a look at what's happened and then do these uh, Roth conversions for the end of the year. So you still have time to get these in for the end of the year. Yep. And so, okay, so maybe there's a couple of opportunities that someone may consider if they could before the end of the year. Is there an opportunity somebody might be thinking about? So number one, if you're of the age where you had to take RMDs, required minimum distributions, um, this year you don't have to because of the CARES Act. So if you're normally, let's say, taking out $20,000 a year out of your IRA and paying the taxes on it, this year you don't have to do that. But depending on your tax situation, you might want to do that because maybe it's still in a pretty low tax bracket. And if, let's say, the people who will someday in, inherit your account are in a higher tax bracket. So it makes sense for you to pay some lower taxes so they don't have to pay higher taxes. So instead of saying, oh, great, tax holiday, I don't have to pay any taxes, maybe you just pay the lower tax rate this year, but do a Roth conversion instead of a distribution. We've done that with a number of clients. Instead of taking the tax holiday, say, hey, great opportunity to get some more money into that Roth with the same tax bill we would have paid anyway in a normal tax year. So that's a great uh, opportunity. The other thing is, if you've been particularly generous this year, if this is a year where you've given a lot to charity because of the disfortunate situation that people have been in because of COVID, right? If you're in a situation where you've run up some deductions and you're gonna be able to do some itemizing or get your, your tax bill down, you might couple that with a Roth conversion. So instead of, oh, okay, I won't pay hardly any or no income taxes this year, maybe I wanna at least pay you know, a certain amount of income taxes because in the future, I won't have all those deductions, I'll be paying higher income taxes. So I'll use these tax deductions now to offset some of the Roth conversion, you know, some of the taxes created from the Roth conversion and save over the lifetime of, of, of that particular strategy. So um, anybody who's been particularly philanthropic this year, I would say that's somebody who ought to consider this um, outside of the normal. And anybody who's uh, had the opportunity to skip their RMDs probably ought to look at their tax situation and take advantage of this. And back to the earlier example, if you're somebody who's like, in a, you know, you're really paying a minimal amount of income taxes, if any, you definitely should look at it because there might be a threshold there where you can get some money out at a very, very low uh, tax rate, much lower than what will be in the future for you. And you wanna to try to take advantage of that. Well, and so to, so to bring it home for people, right? We've talked about, you have two types of accounts or traditional and a Roth. We're talking about taking a portion of your traditional route that's appropriate for you, that is not going to trigger some other event if you take too much. Maybe it's a way, as Travis said, to create basically some free money where you won't have to pay income tax. Move that portion into a Roth where it can still be invested. We did a series earlier in the year where we talked about what is investing. Um, I think sometimes people may say my traditional IRA earned 10%. What you're actually saying is the investments within your account earn 10%. The IRA did not earn 10%. The investment advisor working with you is doing that. So some people may say, well, I've made a lot of money in my IRA this year. I don't want to take money out and put it into a different account. I may not earn as much. The idea is that when you move the money into a Roth, you're still going to have it invested in a way that's appropriate for you based on your goals and what you're trying to do. So your planner can help you do that. But I think what you're really touching on is making sure that somebody is taking the appropriate amount out and not just making a decision in a bubble. So a financial planner, one that's working in your best interest, can understand your total tax picture because the amount that you can take and convert may be different from your neighbor next to you or your neighbor across the street or a coworker. So we don't wanna ever make decisions right. in absolute terms where just because somebody else did something and it's appropriate for them means that it is for you. So there is some real tax planning at the end of this year that we just don't want you to leave money on the table if you don't have to. So if you're of that age where you were taking an RMD, this is a great time to reach out to your planner. If you find yourself, as Travis said, with a planner or an advisor that says, I don't give tax advice or a tax professional that won't give you the kind of investment advice, reach out to our team. We still got time. We got a couple of weeks here before December 31st. Uh, we'd love to meet with you. We offer no cost meetings to meet with one of our planners. And this again, we're independent fee only and fiduciary. So there's no commissions or sales in the way. Uh, but we hope that these year end tax plannings become exciting to you because these are ideas and opportunities. And Travis and I have said all year that we want to be proactive in giving you ideas versus I just do, don't do nothing. 
Sometimes that's appropriate, but sometimes you also want to know ways to save not only you, but potential heirs and other people money in the long run. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our team. As always, Travis, thanks for dropping some knowledge on people. Today was about Roth conversions. If you have questions, reach out to us. Uh, but until then, hope everybody has a great day. Thanks so much.